And so, on this movie you will watch a typical elementary 6 installation, and a few more things along the way. But you've been warned! This is gonna be the wrong method of acquiring elementary OS, so under any circumstances you shouldn't, I repeat, you shouldn't follow this method. What if someone threat your life with a gun? I've already downloaded and fired the public beta image, and that's the first screen we face after boot, asking us to select a language. So let's do that, see you in a bit! And then we have the keyboard layout. Okay, next is the try or install screen, and if we select the demo mode we basically go into the live image. Shall we? One reason to go live is because I want to update the installer, since the beta image ships an older version. So let's open a terminal, and meanwhile I can't understand why the terminal isn't on dock already, instead of all those apps that none knows what are for? Anyway! Let's do an apt update! Perhaps the most pathetic thing of the month! And then I'm gonna only update the elementary installer and nothing more! All done! and we don't need the terminal for now. What we need is to start the installer again, and continue where we're left. Language Keyboard And here we are! We've already done the demo mode, so next let's try the custom installer maybe? And that radio selections, weren't there before, and it was confusing if there were buttons or not. Well, we have no partitions yet, so let's modify the partitions we don't have. And that will open Gparted, which might not be like a usability issue, but from UX perspective it just says that elementary is incompetent to follow the Chinese development, or even Pop OS for that matter, since they share the installer. Anywho, let's create a partition table, say GPT? Apply, and let's go for the partitions next. Gonna do my favorite scheme, one partition for boot, around 500 megabytes. And that should be FAT16. And one more for root. We're going to use all the remaining disk space, and set that to ButterFS. Although the format doesn't really matter, because we can optionally reformat from with an elementary installer. Alright? Apply, and wait! Okay! Let's close everything, and return back to our installation. Now we can see the two partitions we created before, so we can select this one, and set it as boot. Not really sure why it mounts it under boot though and not under EFI. Then we grab the other one, and set that as root. And set it again as butterfs. Hmm, it doesn't need format? Great! Okay! That could work just fine, but instead I will cancel everything to also show you the third and last choice. Which is the erase and install, and even if it doesn't look like something special we can consider it the default option. Here we can only select our main disk drive, and erase and install. That will create two partitions. One primary for the boot and one extended with two volumes, one for root and one for swap. I think it was always like that, so nothing different here. And finally we have the full disk encryption that is strongly recommended to do, but this is a virtual box installation so I'm gonna skip. Now, first of, I really really love the ability to see the full console output, and I like the design part of it too. And second, check out elementary logo that continuously changes colors, and I'll come back to that later, because it is a great kinda hidden feature. So, we are ready, let's restart! Poof! Apologies for the poor resolution, but in reality it's elementary's fault. So, language once again, followed by keyboard input selections. And it's time to create our user. Obviously this was made for OEM installations, and it's the most significant change from the previous installer. In the meantime, the lock screen is the same like before, but I never get tired of it. Finally we are inside, and we have the quick setup window that also warns us we're using an early build, that we won't be able to upgrade on stable release. Oof, the typical panic room of Team Elementary. Basically what happens is that if the stable release has some different settings, 
early adopters should manually update, but elementary says that with lots lots of drama. A pro way to scare people away I believe, but whatever. So, next, and next, and now pay extra attention to the colors. I'm promising you things will get so much better. In the meantime let's put some dark to our lives. Next. Boring. Pass. Housewife? No thanks. All done. Oh my god, where is the terminal again? Alright. If you wanna dance, we'll dance. Yeah, so we hit the dance floor Body on mine, want a little bit more Shout you fine, build a little rap for And we lose track of time, we don't care anymore uh, yeah. I think this film has totally lost purpose The next stop is to make a system update If I remember the script correctly But first we need to change that super stupid host name So, host name control And set new host name to my 6 maybe? And open a new tab to apply the changes which reminds me how much I like Elementary's new tabs design. Then we need to do an apt update. And then an apt to dist upgrade, which it reminds me that none is innocent. All done! And if you stayed that far, stay a bit more, because we just getting started. So, reboot and see you in a second. So I'm back, and I also made an account for Chino2, to make this login screen cuter. And did you know all this is GTK made? Not like the stupid shell with the dead toolkit, which is a huge issue and nobody wants to talk about. But it's also out of this video scope, so let's get inside to our fully updated elementary for now. Alright, just a few things I never showed you before. Won't take long! I promise! So you remember the logo on installation that was changing colors? Now check this out! If we choose another accent color, for example green, then the elementary logo will become green too. That's exactly how you know when people really love what they do. Oh, and it just gets better. Remember the available colors on initial setup? After the update we have a new super color, that gets the dominant color from the wallpaper and matches it to the closest available from the palette. So if we select this background image for instance, it will most probably set the accent color to gray. Obviously it can only get one of the predefined colors, and that's actually a GTK limitation. Done from here, but let me change the wallpaper cause I don't really like this. Not a huge improvement, but anyway. On the bright side terminal is now on dock, and let's check what's up with the flat packs. So we have these three pre-installed. And next let's check what else is available. Huh? One of the new flat packs is the Tasks app, that on public beta is pre-installed as a Debian package. Haven't checked on GitHub, but that makes me believe that on final image tasks will come as a flat pack instead. And that's one of the issues you have to manually take care if you update from the beta to the final. No need to make a clean installation really. In the meantime there is a highly controversial change on App Center, although personally I'm 100% with Team Elementary on that. By the way after 3 years of Flatpak, and still we can't calculate the app sizes, I guess things in Linux desktop start working properly after 12 years. And in general App Center has major issues with the Flatpak support, so they need a bit more time to work on that. But I'm not quite sure they have any time left to be cynically honest. But there is nothing controversial about Flatpak. Did you notice how few apps App Center was displaying? Even inside system category there is only a bunch of them. That's because elementary blacklisted Ubuntu repositories from the App Center, although everything is still available from the CLI. And so, that was everything for today. And next time I'll reveal you the correct way to get elementary, or maybe I get lazy. Coco out.